among the Jews, it is important to distinguish between the end of day and the beginning of night. So, how do you know? There once was a rabbi who was asked by his students, Master, how should one determine the hour in which night ends and day begins? One student suggested, is it when the person can distinguish a cow from a buffalo from a distance. No, said the rabbi, it is not. A second student tried. Huh? Is it when one can distinguish a rambutan, a rambutan tree from a mangosteen tree from afar? No. Not that either, replied the teacher. So please tell us the answer. The students back him. How should one determine when night has ended and day has begun? And the rabbi said, It is when you look into the face of a stranger and see your sister or brother. Until then, night is still with us. So, uh, if you cannot recognize your fellow human beings as your brother or sister, you are still in the dark. Pope Francis would love this story. Pope Francis, universal fraternity. We are all brothers and sisters. This is the typical Franciscan vision. When Jesus began the three years of his public ministry, he preached in the synagogue of his own hometown, Nazareth. And among other things, he said, he quoted prophet Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord has sent me to proclaim recovery of sight to the blind. This is what Jesus does in today's gospel. He opens the eyes of a man who had been blind from the day of his birth. However, we would be mistaken if we see today's gospel as merely the report of another miraculous healing. The miracle of the blind man has to be understood as a sign of something much deeper. A sign of Jesus' effort to achieve something deeper and far more difficult to restore the sight of all men. We are all born blind, of course, not in the physical sense, but in the sense that to the darkness of our sinful nature, the darkness of our sin, the darkness of our ignorance, all of us have lost the true knowledge or the true vision of God and of ourselves and of creation. All of us need, therefore, to be enlightened again. And it is only through Jesus that we can recover our vision to see rightly, to see correctly, and not be blinded by our sins, our selfishness, our prejudice, etc., etc. So there are various ways of seeing 
We know they are people with very good eyesight. Good eyesight. I admire those people. When they come to middle age, still don't have to wear spectacles. Nowadays, young, young fellow also wear spectacles. Many people have good eyesight and yet fail to see. Fail to see so much that is good, that is true, that is beautiful around us. They don't see. Helen Keller, who was blind from infancy, wrote these words, The greatest calamity that can befall a person is not that he should be born blind, but he should have eyes and yet fail to see. And of course, there are people with very poor eyesight or are blind outright and yet able to see clearly. The first reading tells the story of the selection of David as king among his brothers, reminding us God does not see as man sees. Man looks at appearances, but the Lord looks into the heart beyond external, beyond appearance, into the heart. In the gospel, Jesus performed the healing during the Sabbath, therefore offending the Jewish religious authorities. The Pharisees interrogated the formerly blind man, and his answers became deeper the more they questioned him. His answer about what Jesus did was only a matter of fact. He put a pace on my eyes and I wash and I can see. His second answer was his own interpretation of who Jesus was. He is a prophet. Deeper level. This answer led him to worship Jesus. Yes, he was now able to see physically, but most importantly, he was able now to see with the eyes of faith. The eyes of faith. The Pharisees, however, remained blind. So sisters and brothers, the most important eyes are the eyes of faith. It's the tradition called the third eye, the eyes of faith. The most important vision is the vision of faith. And for us, the vision of our Christian faith. That's why it is so important to know our faith well, know our Christian faith well. It is breath and it is death because we live life from this Christian vision how we look at people, how we see people, how we see creation. It's the vision of Jesus, the vision of our Christian faith. So today's gospel story is essentially a story of faith and its climax is when the man makes an act of faith in Jesus when he professes, Lord, I believe and worship him. He became a disciple of Jesus. The blind man who gained his sight, he, who gained his sense of sight, became a witness to Jesus. At first, the man was merely telling his story, as I say, as a method of faith, you know. The third time he was asked to tell the story, I said, he was a bit annoyed, you know. He's a bit annoyed. I already told you already, and you did not listen. So now instead of becoming intimidated, he gained the courage and answered back. 
He got the courage, not the parents, huh? and answered back, if this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Of course, because of this, the leaders of the synagogue expelled him. It was the huge man's faith that gave him the courage to speak. It was his experience of Jesus that turned him into a witness to Jesus. Ironically, in this story, a blind man became a witness. It was his disability that became the starting point of discipleship. The same thing happened to St. Paul, the apostle. After experiencing, after his experience of the risen Lord on the road to Damascus and becoming blind, and then after regaining his sight, he became a fiery missionary disciple of Jesus, an effective witness to Jesus. After that, no one could turn St. Paul away from his convictions about Jesus, no matter the beating, imprisonments, and all the man, all manners of persecutions he underwent. Sisters and brothers, we ask ourselves, how strong is our faith convictions? Our faith in Jesus and our courage to bear witness to Jesus. So sisters and brothers, this is a good time to do a lengthened review of our life. Is there any event that challenges your faith? Can we look at these events not just as a matter of facts, but go beyond them? Try to see them with the eyes of faith. Seeing God's hand at work in all things. This morning when I was popping at the JP2 hall sessions, the speaking, I caught the word, seeing God in all things. A typical Jesuit spirituality. See God in all things. Seeing God's hand at work in all things as means, an instrument to purify us, to sanctify us. So just as the blind, just as the man's blindness led him to Jesus and the light, let us allow our weakness, our frailties, our failures, our incapacity bring us to discover our need for God's mercy, for healing, for spiritual renewal and growth in the life of the eight habits. And to you, our dear RCIA elect, you have gone a long way in your faith journey, in your gradual discovery of Jesus and His church, and you are now willing and ready to make that act of faith in Jesus and to become his missionary disciples on your day of baptism and confirmation on Easter Virgil. This light of faith in Jesus will be God's gift to you in baptism. Let us pray. O Lord, Heal our blindness. Help us to see everything from the eyes of faith. Lead us from the darkness of ignorance and sin to the light of faith. Amen.